On May 24th, we ordered something that is really gonna make our kitchen look sexy. And today, on July 25th, we finally got it. Our fridge! <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Gadget. So far, so good. I'm just checking to make sure there's no dents or gouges. Whoa, this looks sweet. So far, so good. Good, good. I like. Whoa, I like. Dang. Damn, girl, girl. <laughs> Too bad we can't put it in the bus because the door's still closed. Yeah. I wonder how you open it. Oh, she's big. Wow. That's big. That's really big. Cool. This looks beautiful. Looks really good. Looks really good. Look at that. Little freezer. Nice. Three stack. It is a three stack. That's plenty of space. Oh, those drawers feel solid. Nice. So it's time to clean up these mirrors. I've been using a little piece of zero, 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 zero steel wool um, to buff off the paint that dribble dripped off the roof onto the mirrors back when we painted. <laughs> back when we painted the roof. Luckily, it's worked really nice on the rectangular ones. Um, these ones, it didn't work so great. It looks like it kind of scratched them, probably because they're plastic and not glass. Dribble drip. You live, you learn. Um, I used some vinegar to clean it up after, and they look all right. Might be something we want to replace if we can't see out them. But I think we'll be able to see out them just fine. So now the goal is to just kind of clean them off. I'm going to sand them down and then we're going to spray paint them an oil rubbed bronze color. Whatever that means. It looked kind of sparkly and cool so we'll see how it looks. Exciting. Supposedly you can use rubbing alcohol to take paint off of rubber, which we definitely have a good amount of. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Better put some gloves on. While Aaron's working on the mirrors and getting those all sanded up and ready to paint, I'm gonna start working on the dribble drips that happened. Uh, I think that we might have used a tip that was maybe a little bit too big because there's a range for tips for the particular type of paint that we use. Uh, so first we're gonna start off with a bucket full of fresh water. So huge shout out to a few of our viewers, What Do You Know and Craig Ellis, and I think there was a lot of other people who were mentioning that when dribble drips happen, because obviously we're not professionals, so drips do happen, so uh, they were saying get dry, wet sandpaper. So we've got 800 grit automotive sandpaper here, getting it wet and do a little wet sand on it and you'll be able to smooth out that dribble drip area without being too aggressive on the paint itself. And then we'll be able to spray, respray the entire bus because we've got two and a half gallons of the paint left, but we'll be able to respray the entire bus again for even thicker coating. And this will make the transitions of those drips hopefully disappear. So far I'm liking what it's doing. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be like destroying everything else around it. Another tip that uh, they said was uh, put two or three layers of the sandpaper that you're gonna use. So if the top one tears, you're not going straight to the block and the block doesn't start marring your surface. Instead, you've got a fresh piece of sandpaper to continue working. Whoa, that's a great tip, Brian. As you can see here, the sandpaper starting to get loaded, but with rinsing it off with some water, it seems to be uh, kind of wiping off. So this is a pretty cool trick. Never done it before, but it's doing pretty cool. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. So I've uh, pretty much eliminated this drip here. There's just a slight, slight little ridge there. I can keep going on it, but I think that maybe the next uh, line of, or spray of paint might just make it disappear. So, I don't know, what do you think? 
Oh, I think that looks really good. Yeah, like you could barely feel it. Um, I've gotten rid of most of the big bubbles here. Um, so I still have just a little bit of work here. And then I've also gotten rid of the bulk on this rub rail. Doing the rub rail was kind of difficult so far just because it's curved and this is flat. Um, but it seems to be taking off the bulk pretty, pretty good. So I just kind of keep working it. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to go in circles or if I'm supposed to go back and forth. So I'm kind of doing just a little bit of everything. <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. The rubbing alcohol got the rubber almost perfectly clean and free of paint. So now these almost look brand new. Pretty cool, huh? I just got these all taped the best that I could. Hopefully, nothing seeps through to the mirrors. Um, yeah, we're gonna try to get in all these nooks and crannies with Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer all in one oil rub bronze. Ooh, sparkles! Air's getting kind of thick in here, so we're upgrading to Breath Pro. Now that we're done wet sanding, it's time to suit up. Body Pro! <gasps> oh wow, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Three. Wait! Hey, wait a second. Missing something. <laughs> Perfect! Breath Pro! Eye Pro! Glove Pro! That was pretty good right there. Can't wait to take the tape off. We're gonna take the tape off right now. And then we'll put the accessories back on. So even though we got a little bit of paint on the bumper here, it doesn't really matter because we haven't painted the bumper yet. So that'll be something that's coming up next. We just have to let the paint job dry pretty nice. Uh, it's already been going for about, what, three days? How long are we gonna do this? Three days? At least. Probably about three days, yeah. So we're gonna continue taking off all the stuff and uh, then we'll mask off the bumper and get that painted, which should look pretty sweet. I have good news. We didn't get paint on that one, that one tail light. Oh, nice, so that's nice. Good news. That means that your uh, tail light uh, taping job, yeah. tail light taping job, went pretty nice. Okay, there's a little bit, but not much. Nothing so to write home still about. Still a little bit of tape here on the side. Nothing to call your mom about. Oh, you could if you wanted to. If you call, wanted to worry her about all that. Call my mom. Call your mom and let her let her know. She'd be like, "No fret, girl." No fret, girl. All right. You missed, you missed a little bit right here. Okay, Stevie. 
right. All right, so we had some seep through, but nothing crazy. I'm a gentle giant. I am a gentle giant. I am a gentle giant. I am a gentle giant. I gotta keep telling myself that. New mantra, babe. It's my new mantra. Oh, that one turned out good. Look at that. Yeah. Now, well, that one over there, those were my first two. So, obviously, I got better with you, time. Oh, you did get so much better. Oh, my gosh. Look at that girl. All that ta tape came off pretty good, even though there was not a... Uh, a pulling tab, a courteous per, uh, uh, the courteous pulling tab. It's not like it's hard to get this tape off. It's not hard to get the tape off, but uh -huh. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Ooh. Whoa, look at that. Holy shnikes. <gasps> look at how nice that is. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> so far. Right there, but not Fingers crossed this one turned out pretty good so far. Oh. Nice. That pretty works. good. We needed to know about that, I guess. Yeah. After filling cooling system, run engine for five minutes. Minimum. Minimum. Vent bus body heaters. Yeah. This is one of my little accent pieces that I was excited about. I'm excited about it too. That's all right. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> old dirty cuteness. Yeah, it's dirty old cuteness. I could probably scratch that off. Yeah, yeah. it's like still wet, kind of. See that? Yeah. Look at that. I think that'll be perfect. Perfect enough. So usually what happens is this is the coolant filling, filling area that you could just open this door and fill from right here. Uh, but what Tony at AAA was saying is that uh, the right angle that this goes in makes it very difficult to fill. So what they end up doing at the school districts is often removing it from that area because it's easier to fill through just this area here rather than having like a 90 or a 45 elbow right there. So yeah, it's just one of those things, you know? Tony told us. Yeah, he did. Told us. Look at that. Nice. That looks good. That's right there. Look at, that. look at all that. Clean. Oh, look at the little yellow sticks oh, at the bottom. Cute, huh? Makes you want to open it. That's like, cute. what's in there? Yeah. That's funny. Putting the brackets back on? Yeah. Putting the brackets back on, and I've got polyurethane caulking here. And all I'm doing is putting a little bit of bead right inside the original screw hole. And that should help seal off um, that hole. Nice. So that should be good. Little sparkly brackets. Sparkly brackets. A few months ago, when we started this journey, we painted the roof. The night we painted the roof, the doo-doo came. You can see that video? Right here. Drip paint all over the side of our bus and specifically really gummed up the rubber. So currently we are cleaning up the rubber. So we've been using rubbing alcohol to rub along here and it takes it off pretty darn good. Look at that. It helps if it's, your cloth is pretty soaked.
right, so something that I found is while putting down the weather stripping, uh, let the weather stripping lie where it is and try not to pull it tight because if when pulling it tight and sticking it down, it wants to, to go back to its original shape. So if it's stretched out, it want, it's like a spring, it wants to come back to itself. And by just like letting it lie down, it tends to stick a lot better and stay in place that we found so far. First window in our bedroom. Boop, boop, boop. Windows are going in nice and smooth. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, let me open the windows. <laughs> What's cool is that these windows can be open even while it's raining outside because they open from the bottom out and so the rain will just shed right off of them. So I think that's a huge win for us. And they got screens. Win for the window. Win for the window. <laughs> that looks so good. Yeah, it does. Oh my gosh, crazy. We have windows. So as I'm putting these in, I use the light to see where the screw head's going because there's a little channel that's on the window itself that the screw tip needs to go in uh, so that it can suck the outside window into the inner flange. Initially, I only put the screw in far enough to start moving the flange. I don't secure it all the way yet because I want to get them all in place so that the flange is nice and stable. And then I go and skip around and start snugging them up so that the window seats nice and evenly all the way around the perimeter. So once we get the a few screws on the inside secure, we like to make sure it's level. Ding! This one's level. Next step, we like to check the edges to make sure that the waterproofing, what's it called? Weather stripping. Weather stripping is covering our hole. In this instance, we have a little gap up at the top corners, so we're gonna fill it in with more weather stripping. Yeah, so the reason why that we have a couple of little gaps is because when we cut the windows, we're brand new at cutting sheet metal. So we cut the hole a little bit too big. And whenever I say a little bit, I'm talking about about an eighth of an inch. And so the weather stripping meets the metal, but it's just like so close that there's like just a hair line there. So what we're doing is backfilling that area with weather stripping. We did it on another window as a test and when we pushed it on, it compressed perfectly and made a beautiful seal. So we're gonna add just a little bit more. Yay. This is a special shot. So I leave the weather stripping backing on so that I could slide it in the gap. And then I pull it off slowly and hope it doesn't rip. And then it sticks perfectly to the weather stripping underneath it. Perfect. So right there, it'll seal that little spot right there that was just a little bitty bitty spot. We don't want to leak, so we just kind of reinforce a little bit. Okay, you can't hold the camera anymore. Ah! Then I push on the top corner and Brian screws it back in. Made a boo-boo with the measuring. That right there is the knob to open and close the window. On the other side of this wall is the washing machine. Boo boo. Mismeasured. Mismeasured. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to cut around here so that we're able to get our hand around there to undo the, uh, the knob. Um, so that's what we'll have to do.
Last window needs a little trimmer on the side. So I scored it with my knife, uh, and this is the part that was hanging over. And then I'm using these tin snips here to just shave off this edge ever so delicately. There we go. Bye bye. Let's try to get it in. Um, we'll try this and then if we need to make adjustments. Oh, let's go. Last window. Sure.